there's something artists need to worry about a lot more than becoming popular. What's harder than becoming popular in music? Well, we're going to talk about it. NF, I don't know if y'all know who NF is. Uh, he's a rapper, though. He's really killing the game. He says, new artists nowadays, I feel like, have to have a harder time staying relevant than they do becoming popular. Mm. Meaning, with the way the internet is, you might have something pop off, but that, but it's way harder to keep anyone's attention. You might have something pop off, but it's way harder to keep someone's attention. And that must be watching the pod, because I feel like. I feel like we had an episode where we said that, you know what I'm saying? I think we did talk about yeah, that. Right. It's way easier to get the attention than it is to hold it. Way. Way easier, bro. Way. Because the the at the entry point, you get the benefit of the doubt. This is new. You're exciting, right? Maybe you've done something I've never seen before. Yeah. Maybe you're the first person of this this type to hit my way. But after a while, it's like, okay, you did it one time, but can you do it again? Okay, can you do it again? Yeah. Okay, can you do it again, right? Do it again. And then you're trapped in the loop. Trap, and that's where it, that's where the the marathon of it all kicks in. The moment you get people's attention, people now have expectations of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, see, that's the thing, man. It's it's this weird space mm-hmm. where, like you said, it's not only easier to get attention in some ways than it was in the past. Right? It's more accessible. Accessible doesn't mean ease. So I'll say that it's more accessible for more people to get attention. Um, especially when we could talk about popular music, we have our avenues, but then there's the competition that not only makes it easier for more people to pop, mm-hmm. but it also makes it harder for more people to stay because there's more people, period, yeah. that own attention. All right, you're fighting for market share day after day after day before you were fighting with a limited set of artists who were signed to a certain extent. We know the record labels sign a lot of people, but we know they only pay attention to a small portion of that pyramid and then you know now you got those 500 u.s major so- label signed artists that you might have been competing with in the past and i'm just yeah. throwing a number out there it might be more larger than five um, hundred let's just say it's five thousand let me make that number up even if it was five thousand back then now we're talking about five million yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. like it's a huge difference you have not only more people who would not have been an artist. More people who are actually willing to try to be an artist. Before you got people, yeah, I like creating music, but it just isn't in my reach. Yeah. I don't even see where to go, know where to go. Oh, I can just do this in my house and give it a try versus have to move to LA, have to mute, move to uh, New York, da, da, da. So you got more people who are giving it a real shot. Yeah. Then you have more people who are actually able to give it that real shot, but then you got even beyond that, people who are not trying to give it a shot and are getting there by mistake. Yeah, bro. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and and it's the only reason I saw I think is is it is easy to get the attention is because you can you can literally just like pay for it. Now I also feel like you yes. know the the attention sources were a little bit more gatekeep. Now yes. any artist today can just wake up and be like, oh, I learned about Facebook ads from Brand Man Sean. I'm gonna set up a Facebook ad and. He's in front of a thousand people by the, the end of the afternoon, right? So yeah. it's it's like and I think with how easy things uh with things and how easy they, they, they come to get, like they become hard to maintain pretty much, right? Easy yeah. come, easy come, easy go type of thing. Yeah. Because fans have so many other things they could pay attention to. It's not yeah. uh, it's not even just about the music at this point. Like you brought the point, right? 30, well, I don't know how I many, let's say 30 years ago, you know what I'm saying? It might have been 20 artists that you knew about at any given time. Mm-hmm. But I looked at my Spotify rap today. I should have said I listened to like something crazy, bro, like 2,800 songs or something this Shh. year. That's just crazy, bro, when yeah. you think about it. Yeah. That's a lot of music. Yeah. And so. For the same price. For the same price, bro. It's all <laughs> under the same Spotify 999 umbrella. You, <laughs> yours, yours isn't any more valuable than theirs for, for that reason alone. And so, yeah, man, that's why you 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 have to give props to the artists that understand how to maintain attention around themselves. However you feel about the methods that they choose to do it, you know, especially the ones that have an understanding of like how to funnel that attention to the music and into the things that don't make them look crazy. You got to respect it because keeping the attention is the hardest part. Yeah. Easy, 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 the hardest part. 100%, man. And I'll, I'll pull this back up. Like, this part, I can't highlight it, but 
A hard time staying relevant. Hard right? time. Staying relevant. What does that even mean? All right? Like, we just had 21 Savage say, nah, it's even relevant. So, for, you know, entertainment purposes, what does staying relevant mean to you? Staying relevant is staying in the conversation uh, the conversation line of people that care about you. That's what I think. All right. All right. Well, who are the people that care about you? All right. Because you always in conversation with your mama. Like, you yeah, have to be, yeah. Be in a certain general pop conversation in commercial media. Like, can a niche artist be relevant in their niche? And what does that look like? Yeah, definitely. You know, like, what is staying relevant? Go a little bit deeper. That's why I think because relevant relevancy is is situational. Right, I could, yeah. I could walk into, um, I could. Uh, we in Atlanta, right? There, there are certain artists that, if someone were to come here and go and ask people about those artists, you know, who are you or who is this person? Like people would know about them, right? Like they're relevant yeah. here. Versus if that same uh, traveling fan could go to maybe Detroit and ask somebody there, how you have you heard of this Atlanta artist? Mm -hmm. No, we never heard him before, right? He's right. Not, he's not relevant in that situation. That, that that demographic for whatever for whatever doesn't doesn't care about them. So that's why I feel like relevancy is so like uh, it, it's so subjectional because the group of people who are talking about the thing determine what is relevant and what isn't relevant. I think know? that's the thing, right? There. <laughs> Let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. I just realized we should always put a description before relevant. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He is nationally relevant. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Internationally relevant, He's yeah. Locally relevant to Atlanta, right? So then that creates a, a baseline. Now, if you say... This man ain't relevant to nowhere and nobody. <laughs> then it's like, oh, shoot. Okay, you really trying to be offensive, but you really are making a statement that they lost all relevancy. Um, but I guess for sake of conversation, we'll say whatever the peak is. And we don't even, we're not even talking about the peak of the peak, right? Because you have when something goes really far. It'll touch a lot of people who aren't that true fan base anyway. Yeah. You know, it's like the hit song and everybody knows a, a, a single song from somebody that they don't know the rest of their catalog. Right? Yeah. But they might have a real fan base. So let's just say the type of your top of your hype for your actual target market. I would say maintaining that relevance is the best judgment criteria. When you start losing relevance to those people that actually are within your target market market. That's when it becomes a problem. But however high you go, when whatever down is from however high high you go within that group, that is what losing relevance looks like. But there's a difference between relevance and not being in current conversation and media, right? Because you can yeah. take a break, then you come back, and everybody's like, "Yo, I'm happy to see you." It's when you take a break and you come back, and you know. So, hey guys, I'm here. You know, like <laughs> when that's happening, that's when you realize, okay, something's not right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, and I think that that's where the problem comes up is people is always comparing. People are always comparing relevancy to like mainstream relevancy. That's the problem. But how many artists have we seen that have zero to very little mainstream relevancy that are a lot of times doing better than some of the artists that have yep. that, that mainstream relevancy, right? Yeah. And so you you said the biggest thing. Uh, as long as you you stay in the conversation of the people that care about care about your niche or care about your thing, right? Yeah. Because you asked it, can you be relevant in a different niche? They, they, there are probably artists who are. It's like the comedy, the comedy of like the comedy rappers and things, right? Like there's some artists who like just kill it in a particular niche. If you know about this world, you know about this person. This person is relevant over here. 
But then, you know, there's a whole other world of people that, that don't know that it exists. So it, that's just the thing I don't like about the relevancy argument is once you hit a certain level of popularity, once your music is, is streaming really, really well, bro, you are relevant to somebody. To somebody. Somebody cares. A group out there cares about you. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So I, one, let's give a shout out to, uh, I'll say, just because they shared it, you know what I mean? The, the, where we got it from. Indie Am- Amplify. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Shout, shout out to them. You, shout out to y'all for posting this. And then shout out to 701 Max. I see you liked it. Max, what's up? If y'all know about Max, Max is one of the people who is a dope marketer out there in these streets. You can go get some business from him, but he's also somebody who was in our, our music marketer program where we help artists, uh, marketers, uh, figure out how to build a business for themselves, right? So obviously, we've built a pretty successful music marketing agency we can help y'all do the same if somebody's interested in that. And then if you're just a label or artist who don't want to build a music marketing agency and make money that way, like we do, you also can just build your own infrastructure. Come build in. Come, come build that infrastructure so you can make your artists pop again and again and again using that same infrastructure we've used to make artists pop again and again and again with so many clients at scale. So one way or another, you know, we'll put a link in the description so y'all can check that out. I didn't even think to talk about that, but seeing Max's name, I'm like, hey, you know what? What's up, Max? Um, yeah, shout out, Max. Shout out, Max, man. He's a really dope, <laughs> really, really dope marketer, man. He's gonna be, he's gonna be one of the one of those strong up and comers, man. In the next couple of years, where where a lot of people are gonna know his name. That's my prediction with Max. 